Well, good evening, Selby United Church, and welcome to this devotional time on this Monday, Thursday evening for 2022. You know, it's surprising that the church doesn't make a bigger deal of the Thursday of Holy Week, because Thursday is such an important day in the Holy Week drama. It is from Thursday that we get the Lord's Supper. It's Thursday that gives us the new covenant and the new commandment. It's Thursday when Jesus illustrates what is expected of those who follow him when he washes their feet. And it's Thursday when Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. But after all of that is complete, it is Thursday when the drama really heightens. After dinner, Jesus takes a 45-minute walk to a familiar place on the Mount of Olives called the Garden of Gethsemane. This is not unusual. Jesus has come to this place before. But tonight, Jesus' disciples join him. And tonight, we too are invited to go with Jesus for this hour of prayer. So as we enter into this time of worship, let us sing the first verse of Go to Dark Gethsemane. Reading from the Gospel of Mark. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him and began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that, if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more, he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. The Word of God for the people of God. This evening, Jesus' mood is different. Tonight, he is sorrowful and troubled in a way we haven't seen before. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he says. Jesus often sent his disciples away so that he could be alone in prayer with his Father. But not tonight. On this night, he wanted his friends close. By instinct, we humans want someone by our side in times like these. I remember being invited to be with a woman before her surgery. I found this odd at the time. Normally, ministers go to see someone after the surgery is over. Pre-op is a busy place to try to have a quiet visit with someone. But she had no one. No spouse, no children, no one to hold her hand, to hear with clear ears the doctor's instructions, to offer words of encouragement. It was one of the most tender experiences of my ministry to silently sit with a woman awaiting a a risky surgery. We prayed, of course. Uh, I read a few verses of scripture, but mostly we just sat silently and waited together. Tonight, the disciples will fail Jesus. They didn't wait. They slept. Jesus couldn't conceal his hurt. Could you not keep watch for one hour? He asks impatiently. His words suggest something more than loneliness. Perhaps he felt the need to have some witnesses interceding with his father, brainstorming for another way. If only there was another way. There's a great struggle going on here. 
Jesus is often depicted praying in the Gospels, but we don't often hear the content of those prayers. But the prayer of this night is known to us. Take this cup from me, he pleads. But in the very same breath, not my will, but yours. People sometimes misunderstand what's happening here. I I, I can't believe in a God who would sacrifice his own son, they say. It's divine child abuse, some conclude. But we must not misunderstand. This is God, the Trinity, in conversation with God's self. We don't need to understand this perfectly. We are speaking of things far beyond our pay grade. We can simply take Jesus at his word when he says, I and the Father are one. And so, when we hear Jesus speaking to the Father on this holy night, we are hearing the heart of God speaking, a revealing of the nature of God himself, a willingness to go to the depths of hell for the good of his creation. Jesus is willing to glorify his Father to the very end. So what was the struggle for Jesus? Surely on some level it was the fear of pain and death. We can relate. But there's so much more. Jesus is about to experience something that none of us can even begin to imagine. God forsakenness. It's one thing to experience the rejection of the world. A a friend turns his back. The relationship grows cold. There's emotional hurt and pain. But what Jesus is about to experience is the loss of the very ground of his being, like losing half of himself. God the Father will turn his face away from his Son. Jesus is going to hell. He is going to take upon himself the full measure of all the sin and brokenness of the world. What is the outcome of Jesus' tortured hour of prayer in Gethsemane? It's the same outcome we might hope for when we pray. The will of the Father became the will of the Son. They were unified in their determination to save the world they loved so much, even at such a great cost. Jesus woke his sleeping friends one last time. The sound of soldiers could be heard approaching. Their torchlight draws closer. The hour has come. And as darkness of this night encroaches, Let us sing, Abide with me. Well now, let us join our hearts together in prayer. Father, we come to you tonight as we remember the night that your Son prayed to you, seeking another way to redeem us. We are in awe that he, 
out of love for us and all of creation, willingly took the cup of suffering so that we might be counted righteous. Lord, tomorrow we will again experience the story of Good Friday. Not a day for gory detail, but a day to contemplate the cost of sin. Be with us, Lord, and by your Spirit help us to understand how your love causes you to act on our behalf. Sustain us as we watch and wait. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, thank you for joining me for this short time of devotion. I hope you will join us tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for a very special Good Friday service with our friends and neighbors from Centerville and Newburgh United Churches. The service is in person and available live streamed online. And so, go now in the strength of God the Father, in the hope of God the Son, and in the companionship of God the Spirit. Go now, now in peace. Amen.